What is required in those circumstances is the declaration of intent. That declaration of intent of formally filing. And in this particular case, the, the, all the affected individual, uh, Honorable Kwachiaka, had actually filed his nomination with the Electoral Commission as an independent. Honorable Andrew Esiama had filed his nomination with the Electoral Commission as now MPP candidate. Morrison, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Cynthia Morrison had also filed his nomination. So the issue of their filing their nomination is a matter of fact. No dispute whatsoever. So when the minority leader then, now majority leader Casey Lato Forsen, raised the issue, the speaker considered it worthy to give a ruling. But you see, like I always say, when this matter came to the speaker, he exercised a lot of sobriety, a lot of patience, and said, look, give me two days to consult broadly and deliver a ruling on it. And therefore, he delivered his ruling. Now, guess what? What was the ruling of the speaker? The ruling said, look, I am aware of a precedent set by my predecessor, Professor Michael Quay. However, I am not bound by that precedent. But looking at these facts, I am minded to do what the Constitution says should be done. What is the issue? Now, prior to that, Alex Afenio Markin had gone to the court. Now, listen carefully. To even stop the speaker from going ahead with the declaration by way of an injunction. The speaker gave an indication that he has not been served with those processes and proceeded to deliver his ruling. Guess what? What Afenio Markin was seeking was an injunction to restrain the speaker from making the declaration. Mm. The speaker had declared those seats vacant and they stand vacant. How do you reverse that process? Because as at Friday, when Afenio Markin went to court, he had not amended the original action. It is the original writ that invoked the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Now, you cannot put an application on nothing. An application should be mounted on an existing action. So the originating motion is not the application. It is the writ. That is what invokes the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Now, Afenio was seeking to stop that thing from happening. As at the time he went to court on Friday, that thing had happened. Like we always say, you don't grant an injunction where the horses are bolted already. The injunction is to stop the horses from moving. Now the horses have moved. So what would be the basis of granting an injunction? So you see, the court then cleverly said, then they are staying the execution. The fundamental question every lawyer will ask, the decision by the speaker, the ruling by the speaker, is it an executable order? If it is not an executable order, what would be the basis to say? Two, I have gone through the law report, and I've been trying to look for a precedent where the Supreme Court of Ghana from 1992, per an ex-party application, stayed the execution of an order. There is none. Are there any body to do that? In fact, if you recall, Tenadi, even that one, the Supreme Court had to do an extraordinary step of restraining the Electoral Commission. It was on notice. A major matter of this nature, to grant an ex party application makes it extremely strange and bizarre. But you see, I have looked at the reasoning behind the Supreme Court's decision to stay the execution of the other one. The Supreme Court says there are special circumstances. What is special about it? Did the speaker stop now minority from conducting the business of government in the house? They voluntarily walked out. Now, where a person has a right to conduct government business, and that person voluntarily walks out of parliament, how can that same person now complain that it will affect government business? In any case, workouts are legitimate exercise of parliamentary work. 
And that is why all over the period from 1992 to date, even when there have been workout, business of government had always run. So it was so strange that the Supreme Court now relies on a purported whatever frustration of government business. At that point, the Supreme Court had now moved into the realms of politics.